And now, another timely and powerful message from Pastor Emmanuel Williams and Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee. Numbers chapter 6. And what I want to do is just for a few minutes, I just want to explain the second part of verse 24. If you remember last week, I stopped on verse 24. Numbers chapter 6. Verse 24 to 26. That we call it the Old Testament, our Father. You remember, you remember that we said it in the New Testament, Jesus taught his disciples the Our Father who are in heaven. Amen. Well, in the Old Testament, there is also an Our Father that God, the Lord Jesus, gave to Moses. Amen. So he could instruct Aaron to speak over the sins. Praise God. And we said, if you can recall, we said that, say, that. We cannot miss and overlook God's intention for us where these verses are concerned. Amen. There is a reason why God asked Moses to tell Aaron to speak these words over the saints. It's not that God could not protect his people. You remember we said that. God can protect his people whether or not a man or a woman speak over his people. Amen. But because God designed it to be so. Amen. God designed it to be so. Not only that, we said that we are co-laborers. We are laborers together with God. Amen? So because we are laborers together with God, we have a part to play. Our part to play is to speak the word of God in faith. Amen? And so regardless of our circumstances, because as we affirm this morning, we know that God is here because he's called Jehovah Shammah. Amen? The God who is there. Can you say the God who's there? Amen. It doesn't matter whether or not you feel him, but we have to agree if the Bible says he's there, he's there. Amen. And as we get more spiritually sensitive, we'll be able to sense him. Let me say that again. As we get more spiritually oriented, we'll be able to sense the presence of God. Amen. Like this morning. Is that all right? Amen. Hallelujah. So we are told here one of the things that the Lord told Moses to communicate to Aaron to say over the children of Israel is the Lord keep thee. Last week we looked at the Lord bless thee. Well, to be honest, we have been looking at it for a couple of weeks. But today we are going to look at the last part of the verse. The Lord keep thee. And I want to bring to your attention again the word thee. It means you. That is personal. It's not you all. God is interested in keeping you as an individual. Yes, us as a church, but God wants you to know that he has you on his mind. It is personal. Can you say personal? Amen. God, that's why, brothers and sisters, we, I, I said we must not misunderstand God's intention for us with respect to this verse. God wants us to know a few things. Not only that, he wants us to speak these things in faith. Because that's how it works. Amen. I told you last week, somebody laughed when I said it and said to me after church, Pastor, are you for real? Yes, I'm for real. The people, the Christians, God, sorry, the Christians, the devil loves the most are quiet Christians. Amen. Last week I said he calls quiet Christians. How does he call quiet Christians? You forgot. He calls, the devil calls quiet Christians, my peeps. <laughs> He loves quiet Christians. Amen. You, you see, Christians, you'll be able like Jesus in the wilderness when the devil came to him. He doesn't like us. When the devil came to Jesus, what did Jesus say? It is written. That's what Je Jesus said something. You see, when the devil comes to us Christians, we do not say it is written. We take his thoughts, amen, and we go in a corner and we take our thoughts and focus, hear me? We take our thoughts and focus on the issue and destroy ourselves. That's what we do. But, but when it comes to a Christian, you say, who says, it is written, he's got to step, get, he's got to leave. Amen, he's got to leave. A Christian who knows how to open their mouth and articulate the faith, faith, their faith. It is written, God said it. I believe it. Y yes, I know. My, I see my situation, devil. Yes. And I thank you for affirming my situation to me. But it is written. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is written. Get the hands. Because I know Jehovah Shammah. Yes, yes. That's what you do. Amen. You, are you getting me sense? 
The Christian life is not a game. It is for real. Let me tell you why it's for real. There is a real devil out there who's invested, listen to me, in our demise. That's all he's interested in. And the only way he gets to us is through, anybody knows? Yeah, through our thoughts. That is the only entry point the devil has through our mind, our thoughts. He cannot touch, he cannot hit you physically. Are you with me, saints? You'll never see a demon taking a two by four to hit any Christian. It, it will never happen. But what he does, he will submit thoughts to you. Mm -hmm. He will whisper things to you. That's what he does. And if you're not astute and careful, you'll take it. That's why the Bible says, take what? Do not take a thought saying. Because the next thing we do is when we take a thought, we say things. Well, 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 well. <laughs> When you take a thought, a bad thought, you begin to rehearse what you heard. And, and, and when you start rehearsing what you heard, if it's not in connection with the Bible, it's going to take you out. When you start rehearsing these thoughts, a very powerful thing kicks in. And that is emotions. Oh, when emotion kicked in, you're done for. Emotions are powerful. They are like electrical current. And they are invoked by thoughts. Mm -hmm. Can you say, the Lord keep you? Yeah, the Lord keep you. We looked at the Lord bless you today. We're going to look at the Lord keep you. Last week, we ended and we said, who's doing the keeping? Ah, who's the Lord? Who's the Lord? Jesus. Since, hear me, hear me. Now I know that there is God the Father, there is God the Son, there is God the Holy Ghost. But we said last week, Jesus told the Pharisees, you miss the scripture. You are searching the scripture, but the scripture, they're talking about me. You, you, you are looking, what are you looking for? If you're looking for anything but me, you'll miss the picture. So that's why I don't want you to miss when the Bible says the Lord here, it's talking about the Lord Jesus. And uh, you know, repetition is the mother of learning. You know what I do sometimes, brothers and sisters? When I teach on Sundays, as I speak with the saints during the week, I ask questions to ensure that they get what I teach. And invariably, 90, 80, 85 to 90% of us doesn't get it. So that's why we know that the mother of learning is what? We have to say it over and over again. That's what Peter said. Peter said, I know you know, but I'm going to put you in remembrance. Peter said, I'm like a big brother. I'm going to remind you until I move out of this earth. Because he knows sometimes, you know, you know, when we leave church and we go out there, can you say life happens? We get into the struggle of surviving. Mm hmm. Well. <laughs> and if you are not careful, everything we learn in church, everything we learn from our study goes out the window. Mm hmm. And then we don't put into practice what we have taught. And so what happened when we don't do that over a prolonged period of time, we have not grown. And so what you have is a 20 year old Christian mm -hmm, still behaving as a babe. Because we overlook, since, hear me carefully, we overlook the simple things. Simple things like this we should not overlook. Because when you overlook multiple simple things, that's what leads to a great fall. A fall like Humpty Dumpty. You'll never be able to put back again. Because you will, your, your faith will be overthrown. I've seen folks who omit to do the simple things and then not omit, omitting to do the simple things over a prolonged period of time. When the devil comes in like a flood, They just lose it. If God was a good God, why did he allow that to happen to me? I thought he was a... I have seen it. I have heard it. We are co-laborers with Christ. Meaning, you and I have to be participants in our delivery. 
in our deliverance we have to be invested in our deliverance and and I, I need us to get that it is not all on God you see hear me Old Testament hear me Old Testament God did everything for them that's why Hebrews 8 6 says we have a better covenant we have a better covenant because Jesus died amen <laughs> The covenant, the new covenant was signed with the blood of Jesus. The old covenant was signed with the blood of bulls and goats. I'm talking too fast. The old covenant was ratified with the blood of animals. The new covenant was ratified with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we have access to God. We don't have to go through a high priest. That's the difference. That is why you and I, we have a part to play. Amen. Because Jesus died and the same power God used in the Old Testament, it is now in us. Well, <laughs> you, you see Old Testament, you could ask for, Old Testament, you could ask for a double anointing. New Testament, you can't ask for that. How much more of God you have? All God moving to you, you can't ask for double God. Yeah, yeah, I hear it all the time. Oh, give me a double anointing. How much more of God do you want? You see, it's an Old Testament. Saints, hear me, hear me. Many of us, we have not crossed over. We have not crossed over from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Are you getting what I'm saying, saints? Hear me, I'm not criticizing. Look, we live in a, I live in a glass house. So I have no right to throw stones all I'm doing is simply tell you the truth I heard a preacher said this once and I just like it can I tell you he said I'm not talking about you I'm talking about who I'm talking about but if the shoe happens to fit you <laughs> oh hallelujah <laughs> but says can you say the Lord bless you? The Lord keep you. We said who's the Lord? Jesus said don't you ever forget that. Because if you miss that, you miss the entire thing. If you miss that revelation knowledge will elude, elude you. Hear me, I'm sharing with you over years. If you miss Jesus, the one who's the wisdom of God, the one who sends the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm, he's the one who sends the Holy Spirit, you know that. Well, that's why he's called, the Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of Christ. It didn't, it, the Bible, the Holy Spirit did not say the Spirit of God. We know that, but he's been very specific because God wants us to be close to him. You see, the world, uh, their gods are far from them. Mm, they are not in touch with their gods, but God wants you and I to know, I mean, that he's in touch with us. He's a high priest who's touched with the very feelings of our infirmities. Yeah, he knows what you feel. He knows what you're going through. Amen. He knows that there is a devil here trying to harass us. Amen. That's why the Bible says he's close to the brokenhearted. If you're brokenhearted this morning, if you feel like things are not working out for you, you have Jehovah Shammah. Can you say thank God for Jehovah Shammah? It means the Lord who is there Whether or not you can feel him, he's there. When, you're, when the tears are rolling from your eyes, he is. Can you say it? he is? Yes, he's right there next to you. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 20, 20, he said, Lord, I'm with you always. Even unto the end. Can you say Jehovah Shammah? Yes, he's there. He's there, Lord. You know, every time I quote the scripture, I remember my mother because <laughs> she always says son I, I don't fly I said mommy why you don't fly she said the Lord said Lord <laughs> <I'm with you." laughs> she, she was afraid of flying that's it <laughs> Lord I'm with you no no it is L-O not L-O-W amen <laughs> oh hallelujah amen <laughs> oh, let me get into some of the material. Amen. The word Lord, can you go back to our text? Let me just quickly 
share with you. The word Lord here, amen, the Lord blessed it, the Lord keep you. The word Lord, as I said, is referring to Jesus. And it came from a root word which means, which means supremacy. Can you say Jesus is the supreme authority? Yes, he is, supreme authority. Amen. He is the controller. It means owner. It means El Elyon, the one who possesses heaven and earth. <laughs> Somebody said to me last week, Pastor, you seem to be on a, on, on a Jesus high. Yes, a Jesus high. And I said, you got that right. But I'm not the only one who's on a Jesus high. God the Father is also on a Jesus high. Here it is. Let me give you a text. Can you go to John chapter 3 verse 35? Listen to what God the Father said about Jesus. John chapter 3 verse 35. It says, the father loveth the whom, and, and, and see what God did because God loved him so much. And hath what? Given all things into what? Supreme authority. He's the controller, the owner. God made him owner. Since we cannot miss that. So I'm not on a Jesus eye only. God the Father is more on a Jesus eye than I am. Look, I'm just doing what I see the Father does. <laughs> oh, is that wonderful? Oh, glory be to Jesus. And hear me, hear me. If you are not on a Jesus is high, you'll be on a devil's low. So it behooves you and I to be on a Jesus high. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Now the word keep here. In these verses, as I said, Shama, S H A M A R, Jehovah Shama, is the name of God that means I am the Lord who is there. God promises His presence. Amen. Now, very important because it means God is there, the word itself has taken on different meanings. Look, if God is there, it means that you got protection. So the word also means protector. <laughs> that word keep here. Can you go to verse? Can you go back to our text, please? Numbers chapter 6, verse 24. I'm looking at the word keep. Amen. I wish I, I forgot to send um, my exhibit. But because keep means shama, shama means the Lord who's there. Mm-hmm. Because God is there, that word keep takes on, keep the takes on other meanings. So we said one of the meanings is to protect. It means to guard. Shama also means to hedge about. How many of you know God does that? He hedges us about. Mm -hmm. That's what he did to Job. That's what he did to whom? Yes, God hedged Job. And God, according to Romans chapter 2 verse 11, God is no respecter of persons. If Job under the Old Testament was hedged, guess who else is hedged? Can you say we are? Why did you say that so soft? We are hedged! Yes, yes. We are hedged. Protected. Now you have to be, you have to make the choice for God to protect you. Hello? You have to make the choice for God to do what? Protect you. So if you and I are driving down, amen, and we see 35 and we uh, choose to go at 55, we have chosen not to be protected. Well, some of you, some, <laughs> amen, well, <laughs> how, how many of you know God came up with, the, with law and order? It, th th that, is not, that is not a man thing. God came up with that. Read Romans chapter 12. It will tell you that God sets up the government. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. And let me show you what God set up. How God set it up. Everything, can you say nothing is, nothing is new under the sun? Nothing, nothing is new under the sun. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go to verse um, 18, 19, 20. I'll show you what the, the order God set up here. So you can see where law and order came from. Amen. So can you go to praying? This is Polish praying or prayer. Can you go to verse 19? Uh-huh. Verse 19. He's continuing to pray. Can you go to verse 20? 
Amen. For which I am Ephesians chapter 1, sorry. Not chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 1. My apologies. Ephesians 1. Okay, verse, can you go to verse 19? I think verse 19. Uh-huh. He's still praying that God would let us know. He's still praying in verse 20. There it comes. Far above all principality. And what? Power. And and these are all spirit. This is a spiritual hierarchy of power and order. Mm -hmm. There are angels that are called principalities, powers, might, and dominion. So all these are different orders God set up. I brought this, I brought this verse to your attention, attention so you can see God is the one who came up with law and order. Amen. You remember the earth was in disarray the bible says the earth was void and without form and what did god do the bible says yeah so the earth was without form and void and god said well what a mess down there let me come and live amongst that mess because it's just a blessing to be in that mess did god say that no 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 god spoke and he put things in order amen he spoke to the water then he spoke to the land come up amen then he created a beautiful environment do you know who god created that environment for that's yes he put things in order for us isn't that a blessing so we said the word kept means it means to hedge about hedge about amen isn't that a blessing can you go to you i mean when you think that, when you understand what it means to be hedge about you can go to bed in peace the bible says no plague shall nigh come nigh your dwelling psalms 91 that's what he's talking about it is going to be all right mm -hmm. it is going to be all right but as i said you and i have to stay within the realms of wanting to be protected amen you don't say well because god is protecting me i'm going to bed and leave my door open no 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 no, no. i'm trying to share with you what how some of us christians think what well, is going to be all right you know god there are angels around the house i'm no you have to be an equal participant in your deliverance and protection so you close your door and when you close your door an angel come and stand with his sword next to your door glory be to god amen oh glory be to jesus and you've done your part god is now doing his part you don't neglect to do your part and go to bed and say well god is so good and start to presuppose well <laughs> if you uh, some of you <laughs> i know some of you are saying why is pastor saying that look when you speak to as much christians as i do and you hear some of the things that are here you got to you got to you have you got to believe god for them because for some reason it seems like we have no responsibility and that's how we were taught growing up just presupposing on god Amen. So the Bible says, keep means, so when we say the Lord keep you, it means the Lord heads you. The Lord guards you. The Lord watches over you. It means the Lord protects you. It also means attend to. The Lord attends to you. Guess what it means? It means the Lord observes you. It means the Lord preserves you. Oh, here it comes. It means the Lord regards you. It means to have a charge of. It means the Lord has charge of you. Because God is there. Can you say Jehovah Shammah? That's what it means when you say Jehovah Shammah. The first time the word Shammah is used. Let me show you. The first time in the Bible it was used was in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Can you turn to Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 quickly? Oh God we give you praise. You got it, Genesis 2, 15. I mean, it reads, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to what? And to do what? Shama it. Meaning to protect it. Meaning to keep an eye on it. Meaning to care for it. So when you say, Jehovah Shama, the Lord keep you. It means the Lord has his eye. The Lord is caring for me. Just like Adam cared for the garden. Ah, somebody. Can you say thank you, Jesus? Oh, yes, yes. Hallelujah. 
Oh, let me give you another uh, another scripture. Can you go to our, um, oh God, help me, help me. Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. Praise God. Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. Let's see another way it was used. So you'll have an understanding as to when, what it means when he said, the Lord keep you. You got it? So he drove out the men and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turneth every way to what to keep the way of the tree of life so when adam and eve sinned god did not want adam and eve to eat the fruit from the tree of life to live in a sinful state eternally now how many of you are dangerous to live in a sinful state eternally that's just a mess you're just devolving and god said before that happened let me protect the tree of life uh-huh and what he did he placed an angel and a fail and a flaming sword to keep what can you say protect to keep an eye on to be in charge of oh hallelujah oh father we give you praise can you give god praise hallelujah oh blessed be the name of jesus now there is a verse in the bible where the phrase the lord is there is used i scour the bible and I, it's, it's the only time it's in the Bible. That's in, in the last chapter in the book of Ezekiel. The last chapter, last verse. Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35. The phrase that the Lord is there, is there. And I'm going to explain exactly what that verse means. Can you go to Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35. Can you say the Lord is there? Yes, the Lord is there. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what your situation look like. The Lord is. Yes. Hallelujah. You and I have to just acknowledge his presence. Amen. Acknowledge his what? Yes. Talk to God sometimes. Say God I know I don't see you. And for some reason I don't feel you. But I know you're not a God who lies. If you are there you are there. Amen. Right here. So it says it was round. Now let me put this verse in context. This verse is the last verse in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel prophesied to Israelites who were in Babylon. They were in a foreign territory. These are not people who were in Israel. But their hearts were in Israel. Amen. Their hearts were in their homeland. And they heard how Israel fell. How Israel, the city got desolate and was ruined. And so God said to them, this is what God said. After God measured the city, north, south, east, and west, it was about 18,000 measures. Uh, for 18,000 measures, that's a total of 4,500 by 4. Just explaining the city of Jerusalem. God has been detailed with them to give them hope. The city is 4,500 measures uh, uh, on every side, north, south, and east. That is where you get 18,000. Amen. Now this is what God said. And the name of the city from that day shall be what? Listen to me. God is talking about a city that's in ruin. Desolate. And God still said. The name of the city is what? <laughs> oh glory be to you. Beloved. Listen, listen. Beloved. If, you, if your life seems to be in a state of ruin. Take heart. Because the Lord Jesus is what? Still. He's still there. He's still there. Things are not working out. He's still there. You feel pressure. He's still there. You feel confused. So all you have to say. The Lord is keeping me. And that's a mouthful. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Keeping me. The Lord is there protecting me. The Lord is there keeping watch over me. Now I don't have to feel it. His word never returns void. He's not a man that he lies. He's there. All you got to do is call on the name of the Lord and say, Father, I know you are there. Open my eyes so I can see you. You don't raise your voice saying, I thought you were a good God. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on here. It's called life. <laughs> Amen. It's called what? It's called life. And the reason why we talk like that, hear me? And you know I used to talk like that. I used to. Because that's how I was taught. 
I was taught, I, I, was in, I, made, I made the mistake of, of singing the song, what God has for me, it is for me. Yeah, yeah. I know without a doubt that he will bring me out. What God has for me, it is for me. I, sing that, I sang that song for five to ten years. Then I said, what's happening? If God has something for me, how comes it's taking that long? Doesn't he hear? Doesn't he hear? But that's what that, that's why I know what's going on. Amen. Because we've not, you know, we've not taught to be to as, as Jesus did. J Jesus, Jesus told the disciples, look, he said, You've got to occupy until I come. He, he didn't say, I'm going to occupy, you just sit back. No, no. He said, You got to occupy until I come. Occupy is to take charge. Do business. Make things happen. That's what he said. He said, the wrongs that you see, make it right. <laughs> the, the wrongs you see, make it right. Because you carry me. That is why we said that the, uh, the not the motto, but the vision of this church, praise God, is for God to, is for, we're looking to equip believers Equipping to empower for godly change. That's what we said we're doing. We equip, equip one another. Amen. So we can be influential. And when you're influential, you bring about godly change. Because you're a God. Because you're godly. That is why you see Jesus going in the New Testament. He was going to individuals who are influential. He went to the eunuch. That's an influential individual because he knows that eunuch, when that eunuch gets saved, he's going to minister, he's going to, minister to everybody. I know a, a particular Christian, he's an, owner of a, he's an owner of a store and he has about eight to ten employees. And once a year, a pastor comes in there and he preaches all day. That's what he does. You, an, an unbeliever never does that. And most of the unbelievers, uh, some of them who work for him say, do I have to be there? He said, yes, you're on the clock, I'm paying. Amen. If you leave, then you, you're not being paid for the hour. You can do that when you are in power. <laughs> oh, glory be to Jesus. That's what, that's what Christians do. We make wrong things right. Can you say, Jehovah Shammah? The Lord who's there. Oh, bless God. What I'm going to do quickly, I'm just going to go to, there is a psalm. Psalms 121. And I want to show you how many times Jehovah Shammah is used in Psalms 121. Do we have that exhibit or not? No? There we go. Wonderful. Amen. Can you put your hands together for our tech lady at the back? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. I, I, I was just, this psalm blew me. I, I usually pray this psalm. But when I saw how many times the word Shammah is used in that psalm, I just fell in love with the psalm. This is Psalms 121. It, re, it reads... Uh, 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 I'm starting from verse 3. God, the Lord. Do you have your Bibles open? Can you read verse? Um, let's just read verse 1 and 2. For contextual purposes. Verse 1 and 2. You got it? Psalms 121. Oh, bless the Lord. Such a wonderful psalm. It reads. I will lift up mine eyes. Unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? <laughs> oh, my help cometh from whom? The Lord whom? The Lord whom? Yes, sir. The Lord Jesus. Don't you miss the Lord now? Don't you get too busy and run around and forget the Lord Jesus? Okay, that's what I mean when I say you have to be astute when you read the Bible. Jesus told them you miss it because you miss me. Where does your help come from? I want you to stop, hear me, can you for this year, stop, just stop saying God like the unsaved. Amen. And refer to God, Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Is that okay? Just so you won't miss Jesus in the Old Testament. Because he's everywhere. And if you miss him, you miss life. If you miss him, you miss revelation knowledge. Ah. Uh, Oh, oh, can you say thank you, Jesus? It says, my help cometh from the Lord Jesus, which made heaven and earth. 
Now, did Jesus made heaven and earth? Did Jesus made heaven and earth? Some of you look like some of you are not. Some of you, some of you are not sure. Some of you are not sure if Jesus made heaven and earth. So I have to show you from the Bible that God said Jesus made heaven and earth. I think is it is it in Colossians chapter one? It says all things were created by Him and for Him. That's what is it Colossians chapter one verse sixteen or seventeen or Colossians three? Uh, yeah, yeah. You need to see that scripture. I, Verse 16. Let, let me tell you. Listen to what the Bible says about Jesus. It is not me that's telling you that. Can you back up to verse 2? Verse, sorry. I'm not verse 2. I mean verse, verse 15. <laughs> verse 15. It says. It's talking about Jesus. It says Jesus is the image of the what? The firstborn of. He is the exact replica. Of God. Notice there is a colon and he's going to tell you more. He is the firstborn of everyone. Preacher. Firstborn of everyone. It doesn't mean that he was created. Firstborn here means order of rank. Are you with me? Order of rank. It doesn't mean he was created. He's not. Jesus was not created. Jesus is the creator. Now to, now, now to convince some of us to see that, that Jesus is not created. Listen to what verse 16 said. For by him were all things what? You cannot be a creature and still be a creator. So you see what God is doing. Because many of them out there are saying Jesus was created. No, the Bible says that by him were all things what? Do you believe the Bible or you believe the Bible? Well, well, you know, <laughs> you, you have a choice to believe the Bible or not. All things were created, by, all things created what, that are what? That are in heaven and that are in the earth. He created visible things. He created invisible things. Lord, look at this, he created law and order. Whether there be thrones or dominions, or, he's giving you law and order. Well, Jesus created law and order, and he created everything you can see and everything you cannot see. Now, now I know that's not how many of us were taught, but that's okay. Take it to take it, amen. It's going to take a little time to shift your theology, but I guarantee you, let me, let me tell you what will happen to you. When that happened to me, all of a sudden, I opened the Bible one day and I closed it. It just started speaking to me. I have never had that concept of Jesus. Never. I used, to, I used to use the word God, God, God all the time. But when I got personal with Jesus, when I began to recognize him the way the Bible told me to recognize him, revelation knowledge, Jesus said, okay, now I can expose myself to you. Oh. Uh, is your concept of Jesus changing? He's not just baby Jesus. No, the Bible says a body was, Hebrews tell, uh, told us, a body had to be prepared for him. Yeah, because he's a spirit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what a blessing. Are you, are, you, are, you getting, are you getting what I'm saying? That's why it's good to invest some time reading the Bible. You see things you've never seen. The Holy Ghost brings things to your attention. And when he does, it changes your perspective. You get closer to Jesus. Amen. You begin to hear from God better. Amen. Because you're no longer like the Pharisees. You no longer miss Jesus in the scripture. Amen. You start talking as a mature Christian. Saying, Jesus, I know that you're there with me. It doesn't seem that way. But I'm not going to raise my voice and lose. Uh, amen. My cool. Embarrassing you. Uh-huh. Well. You know, I had to bring, I, you know, I, I had to bring the scripture because many times, you know, believers would tell me, Pastor, are you sure the Bible is referring to Jesus? And I have to say, yes. Yes, he is referring to Jesus. So, so we, 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 we said here, our help cometh from the Lord Jesus, amen, which made heaven. So you see the Old Testament and the New Testament is consistent. 
We are the ones who are not consistent. We just we just saw in the in we just saw here Colossians 1 16 that all things were created by him. We are told here in Psalms 121, he created heaven and earth. Old Testament attests to the truth, New Testament. It's you and I to accept the truth. We have a choice. You can agree with what you read. I remember I used to listen to Hank Hanagraph. He's called the Bible and some man for years. I mean, I could articulate everything he says. And he says once, he said, the human beings, we are three parts. He said, we are two parts. He said, we are not three parts. He said, we are spirit. We live in a body. And that spirit has a soul. But there is nothing as body, soul, and spirit. So I was reading the Bible. And I came to First Peter chapter 1. Is it verse 23? Is it, is it, Lord God, help me, help me. I didn't mean to bring these verses. Is it, it says, it says, for we were oh, body, soul, and spirit. Is it, is it First Peter chapter 1 verse 3 or, you all, you all, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get these verses. These verses, I'm trying to memorize them, but I haven't, I haven't done it as I want to as yet. Uh, uh, is it first, is not first Peter. Mm. But it has, it has body, soul, and Paul prayed that, that all your body, soul, and spirit be saved. Is it first Thessalonians? Can you go to first Thessalonians? One twenty-three or five twenty something. See, see, uh, Lord help us. I think we'll get some help shortly. Amen. It has to be one of them. Yes. You see, I'm still trying, you know. You see all of these. First Thessalonians 5.23. Sometimes you get them mixed up. huh? So what I was doing, what I was reading the Bible, I heard him say that, Mr. Gilmore. I listened to him. And I began saying, well, you know, we are human beings are two parts. So what I'm doing my Bible study, what I'm doing my Bible study, I read, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God your whole spirit and the soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of and the Holy Ghost said read it again so I said okay I'll read it and the very God of peace sanctify you holy and I pray God that your whole spirit your whole soul your whole body be preserved and the Holy Ghost asked me do you still believe human beings are two parts Pastor Webb I'm telling you in my Bible study and I said, Lord, I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry. The importance of doing diligent, due diligence in Bible study. God will speak to you. Change your perception. Well. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. So you have a choice to believe God's word or believe what a man says. I used to believe what a man says until I ran into Jesus. It's good to run into Jesus. Let me tell you, try it sometime. You like it. <laughs> Just <laughs> try it sometime. You know how to do it? One Saturday afternoon, say, okay, I've worked all week. I have not the time to pray and read. But this Saturday, this Saturday, I'm going to take me two to three hours. Between two and five, I'm going to get me a nice, I'm going to get me a nice cup of iced tea or coffee. Mm -hmm. Somewhere quiet. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to read for two to three hours. Hear me? It will change your perspective. Wood, when I started, I used to read and I understood nothing. But my mother always said to me, Emmanuel, take your time. Because God is not in a hurry. She was the one who reminded me. God told Moses to come up the mountain so we can talk. And it took God seven days. To say one word to Moses. The man sat there for seven days. It would seem to me. Pastor Ed, If you ask me to come up to speak. You'd be in a hurry to say something. Not take seven days. She said you stand in there. Read it. Even if you don't understand it. Read it by faith. Well, I thank God for my mother. Let me tell you. She's gone, but I missed her. You hear me? She said, you hung in there. Read it by faith. For years, she would get up every morning, 5 to 7.30, and read the Bible loud. She wakes up everybody. And she didn't care. So one day, one day, one day, 
me and my smart self, Mr. Grover. And she was preparing breakfast in the kitchen. Dr. P, I, came, I said, Mom, come on. I came, I gave her a hug. I said, don't you think it's unreasonable to be getting up at five and waking up everybody? She had a frying pan. <laughs> but I said, well, she served. <laughs> I fell out, knocked out. Let me. No, my uncle took me to the hospital and she, con she continued ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. like nothing happened nothing happened that, that, that movie that, that, uh, is, is there, is there a, movie, a, a movie company called Stars 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 is, is it a channel it's a channel look I saw that in 1978 <laughs> that, <laughs> Some of you, some of you heard of stars. I, I heard recently, but, but when I, when that saucepan, that frying pan hit my head in 1970, I saw stars. Some, some of you got introduced to stars. No, I saw that back then. As a young child, about 10, 11. <laughs> That's how we tell me the, <laughs> they were to pursue God. Uh huh. Nowadays we seem to be very busy. I'm almost done. Psalms 121. I'm trying to move away. I promise. I'm not going to tell you anything about my mother anymore. Okay, man. Verse three says, "Jesus will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that what? Can you say shama? Oh, he that keepeth thee, not thou. Thou means y'all." V means you still interested in you as a person as an individual he that keepeth God watches over you protect you preserve you shall not what Sh sorry Sh will not slumber in other words Jesus doesn't sleep in this is what it means the enemy doesn't have a chance he continues verse 4 behold he that what can you say shama Shama, Israel, notice it says first, he that keepeth Shama you. Now he moves to he that keepeth Israel. Uh huh. Shall neither slumber nor again to tell you, God doesn't get off duty. He's always on duty. He doesn't take a rest. Uh huh. He doesn't say, well, I've done my eight hours, I'm going to clock out. No, 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 no. He's always on duty. Uh huh. It says here, the Lord whom I put Jesus in bracket. That's not in the Bible. Are you with me, saints? So I put Jesus there. So you so so you remember who he is. The Lord Jesus is what your shama, your keeper. The Lord Jesus is your shed upon what your right hands. Verse six says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Now this is what the Bible is saying. Hear me, this is what I call total protection. It means everything under the sun that's evil cannot touch you. Everything that's under the sun, under the moon cannot touch you. Oh, glory be to Jesus. He says in verse 7, the Lord Jesus shall what? So the word keep also mean preserve. Uh-huh, Shama, you from what? Now how many times God have to say that? Now, if God says that, it means that there is evil somewhere. All right. Uh huh. He continues. He shall what? Shama your soul. The Lord Jesus shall what? Preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth. And what? How many times Jesus have to use the word shama in a psalm to tell you and I he's got us covered? No need to worry. Yes, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. I'm going nowhere. Even if your life seems to be in, in ruin, it doesn't matter. I am still there. Do not. Listen, listen, listen. That, do not define yourself after the way your situation looks. That is not you. This 
come to pass. Tell your neighbor, this too shall pass. Yeah, this too shall pass. I, I, I'm just here for now. Things are going to get better because I have Jehovah Shammah with me. Amen. Jehovah whom Shammah with me. Tell one day I'm going to smile again. Yeah, one day I'm going to dance again. One day I'm going to walk again. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, because I have Jehovah Shammah. That's what it means when you say, the Lord keep you. Ah, glory be to God. That's why you need to know what's behind these words. Yes, God. Hallelujah. You see, it's one thing to just say them and leave. But when you know what they mean, you begin to say them differently with conviction. Yeah. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. My soul is preserved by God. My way is preserved by God. Today is going to be a good day. Hallelujah. Because I have Jehovah Shammah with me. Is that all right? Oh, Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Can, can I? I have two exhibits quickly from the Old Testament and from the New Testament. You can, can you give me 10 more minutes? Because I want to show you how God keeps his people. It's one thing to talk about God is a keeping God. But we need to look at how God keeps his people. You remember, I'm going to give them to you quickly. You remember Nebuchadnezzar to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. I said it too fast. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They call them Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. God, and what did Nebuchadnezzar did? Nebuchadnezzar wrote alone and said, Anybody in my kingdom who doesn't bow when the trumpet sounds, they are going to be thrown in the fiery furnace. Didn't he say that? And, the, and Jehovah Shammah is here listening to him. Let the devil talk. Let the devil talk. Listen to me. Let him talk. Let him roar. He doesn't, uh, glory. he doesn't have no power for you. Because Jehovah Shammah is here. And the three Hebrew boys stood. And when they blew the trumpet, everybody bowed. But the three Hebrew boys, they were standing. Not bowing because there is a commandment in Exodus chapter 20. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not bow to anything created. Oh, and that's in their hearts, Pastor Webb. I'm not going to turn my back on God. And, and when they looked, they saw three Hebrew boys that all the, other, all the other Israelites were on their knees. Even those who said they had bad knees. I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why do I do those things, Elder? I, any, any, <laughs> they were all on their knees when the trumpet sound. And when Nebuchadnezzar looked up, he said, three Hebrew boys defy my command. He said, throw them in the fiery furnace. He didn't see only throw them. He said, hit the fiery furnace seven times hotter. Because he's trying to get them afraid. Fear. So they can bow. And they said, okay. We are not even concerned. You don't understand. What when you are fully convinced. And you run into Jesus. You can stand before any man and not be intimidated and not moved. And they said, King, we are, even, we are not even concerned what you're going to do. Because we know that our God is well able to take care of us. And that enraged Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said, throw them in the furnace. And the Bible says, the seven men who came to throw them in the furnace, the furnace was so hot. The seven men who came to throw them got burnt and died instantaneously. The three Hebrew boys went in there. And then all of a sudden, a fourth man showed up. That is not a story. That's for real. Nebuchadnezzar looked and said, I thought we threw in three men. But there seems to be a fourth man. And that fourth man looks like the son of God. <laughs> His name is Jesus. The Lord Jesus showed up and he took the heat out of the fire. That's what he does. Yeah, you're going through, but he's going to make it manageable. He'll take the heat from your fire until total deliverance comes. He's a keeping father. He's a keeping God. The Lord keep you. 
Ah! Jehovah Shama. Shama showed up. Oh, glory. He does that. I like that. I'll write a book. Shama showed up. Yes, sir. My God. Pastor Webb isn't got a good God. He shows up every time. Don't you worry if your circumstances he's got you covered. Just say Jehovah. I'll tell you some days. Would all I say is Jehovah Shama. I would leave the office and just come here. Jehovah Shama. Good God, you are there. I know. Strengthen me. Jehovah Shama. And he looked and he saw. He saw. Cedric, Michigan, and Abednego moving in the fire. He saw them having a meeting. <laughs> oh, and then he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, he, 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 what he said? Servants of the living God. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. He said, come out of the fire. He came, they came out of the fire. And he passed along and said, the only God. There is, is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, because he's a keeping God. That's Old Testament. New Testament quickly. Peter, Acts chapter 12, verse 1. Uh, Herod. Mm -hmm. Christianity is spreading through Jerusalem quickly. The devil moved on Herod to stop it. Uh -huh. So Herod went and he chose, he, he killed James. Yeah, he arrested James, thrust him through the sword. And the entire city of Jerusalem said, ooh, ooh, he's taking them out. So that, that empowered him. Strengthen him, incentivized him to do more. So he went and he arrested Peter. And he said, tomorrow I'm going to check out Peter. But the Bible says, listen to me saints, I want to make, I, I, I use this story just to bring that point. The Bible says when Herod arrested Peter, prayers was made for him without ceasing. Are you getting that? You see, I said God is a keeping God. But we have a part to play. Don't you neglect your praying and talk about God is going to keep me? Are you getting me, saints? I said, you and I, we have a part to play. The Bible says, the saints are praying. Peter is sleeping. Peter is what? The Bible said, Herod arrested Peter. And he's been guarded by four quaternions. Four sets of four soldiers rotating. One, come from, one set come from 12 to 3. They clock out. Another set come from 3 to 6. They clock out. Mm -hmm. Just because of one man. Arrested. Chained. What's his crime? Preaching the gospel. That's all. That was his crime. Peter is sleeping. Wood. Toes up. Toes up. And you can hear him on the other side. Listen to me. The man is on the brink of being executed. And he's getting sweet sleep. Because he knows Jehovah Shammah. The Lord who's there. This is the same Peter. Listen. The Bible says Peter came out one day. And his shadow fell on people and they got healed. He began walking in Jerusalem. And folks were rushing to touch him. Rushing to touch him. I'm telling you that because this is the same man who cut Malchus's ear and cursed. Are you getting me? I'm telling you. This is the same man who grew. He was a baby Christian then. He didn't know better. God is a forgiving God. God is a God of a second chance. Don't you turn your back on Jehovah Shama. It shows you how God worked with Peter to the point where the man became mature. And now he's, people are rushing to touch him. They arrested this man and now he's asleep. Toes up. They can hear him snoring. And the Bible says, all of a sudden, an angel. Somebody from a different realm. Somebody who came from, this is, came from the, 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 the parent realm of the earth. You see, this natural realm has a parent realm. It's called the spiritual realm. And the Bible says, he just showed up. No doors open. He showed up and he, he kicked Peter. Get up, get up, get up. Peter got up and he said, put your clothing on. Listen, 
He said, get up. And as soon as Peter moved his hand to put his clothing, the chains fell. He didn't say, where's the God? Let me get the key. The supernatural power from the different realm. Because Jehovah Shammah is here. Uh, you don't understand. A representative, look, look, hear me. A representative of Jehovah Shammah came up. And the chain just fell off his hands. Peter said, whoa. Peter put his clothes. And the Bible says, they passed the first set of guards. They passed the second set of guards. And the big old gate that took 12 men to open, just opened by itself. And Peter said, whoa, am I in a dream? Is that for real? No, no. Jehovah Shammah showed up. Yeah. The one who's able to keep you. So they're walking and the Bible says the big old, the big, all the other guys are asleep. And Peter is pinching himself saying, is that for real? Now come on. You, get, you just got a big kick. And you're asking if this is for real. Come on. So you saw the chains fall up. You, you, and you're still asking, is this for real? Can I give one more joke? Just one more joke. Can I give one more joke? One commentator said, that's why they call them disciples. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> anyway. I didn't say that. Somebody said that. I, I try not to put these jokes in there, but you, your face is say, just share it with me. <laughs> but, but, listen, listen, hear me carefully. Peter was released. Jehovah Shammah showed up. And Peter went to the saints. And while he knocked on the door, they were still praying. Early in the morning, they prayed around the clock on Sissy. I have a message for you saints. Do not neglect your prayer life. This is how you give Jehovah Shama the right to show up in your life. Do not depend on the prayer of other people. Are you with me? Thank God for us praying for one another. But ensure that you log in your time. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Ensure you log in your time with Jehovah Shama. So when you call, he won't be saying, who's that voice? <laughs> Who, that, that's that's Grover right there. I know that voice. We commune this morning. That's Eric right there. We commune this morning. That's Vienna. Oh, we just spoke a while ago. Oh, glory be. Are you with me? Are you getting what I'm saying? That's that that that's Dickness Mello. She just told me about her children. I, I know that voice. Angel, go deliver. Can you say the Lord keep you? The Lord keep me. The Lord keep me. Say, Father, keep me. Keep me, Jesus. Oh, we give you glory. We give you praise. Please take time to meditate on the word and let it sink into your heart and soul and mind today. Knowing that the Christian who meditates on the word will be like a tree planted by the water, bringing forth fruit in its season and prospering in all that he does. But what if you aren't a Christian today? What if you don't know if you're bound for heaven as a forgiven child of God? If that's you, then let's take care of it right now if you're ready. Do you believe that Jesus died for your sins? Are you ready to be forgiven of your sins and washed clean and made new? Are you ready to begin your new life in Christ? Then turn to God right now and say, Lord, I love you, I need you, I repent of my sins. Lord, please forgive me and wash me clean. I receive your forgiveness right now as I put my faith in Jesus as my Savior. God, please lead me and teach me and show me how to live from now on. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you're looking for a good church family, you'll be welcomed with open arms at Imitators of God Ministries, Colossal Vivacious Church in Tallahassee located at 4750 Capital Circle Southeast, near Tram Road. Sunday school begins for all ages at 10 a.m., and the morning service begins at 11, and the Wednesday evening service begins at 7. This is a life-giving, multicultural, multi-generational church where people of all races, backgrounds, and walks of life 
come together to worship, to be inspired in their love for God, to develop relationships, and to be empowered to live out God's purpose for their lives. Find more information on their website, imitatorsofgodministries.com, or call the church, 850-408-8496.